right? So that's the hidden violence behind government that uh, it contradicts our moral positions to begin with, right? It misleads us into compromising our principles. Um, and because the only way that government knows how to solve any problems is the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus so the plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I already share. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, um, do you mind if I ask you a question? Please, yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. This can go back to Yeah, the absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are the thoughts that you and I share. Yes. And what, why do you think that you and I and the majority of people in Richmond, let's say, share these thoughts? I think that uh, we are misled into believing uh, that none of us are good, that we're born bad or evil or sinful or whatever word you have to use. And so the, the prescription government is the solution. They're the ones who are going to solve our problems. They're the ones that can't be corrupt, that can't be evil, and can't be bad. Uh, but I, I found up myself to be the case to be opposite of that. I found myself that people are inherently good. People do want to make good choices. People don't want to use violence to solve their problems. So I have these kind of interview discussions talking to people and I found a majority of the people I talked to, yeah, I don't use violence to solve my problems, great. And then we'll find a contradiction with government and that it tricks us into participating in the system and a system that only knows how to solve problems through violence. So when you say government, you mean you say you mean US government? Uh, yes, any form of government. State, any form of government. Yeah, state, local, city. Uh, they all have taxes. They all still take uh, from your uh, from your money, from your resources, right, to fund their ideas and what's best for you. Uh, and then they all it's all under threat of force, right? If you don't pay your taxes, right? If you don't pay your local city taxes of Richmond, if you don't pay your state taxes, federal taxes, uh, you get thrown into a cage, right? There's a threat behind that. Um, so what is what is government? I guess well, how would you define government? Well, I mean. I guess that's, that's a question that political scientists throughout the years try to right. figure out. One, the other thing is that, um, to me, it seems that you're, I mean, did, kind of going out of your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it seems that you're defining a utopic state of society. Uh, what part does it seem utopic? Um, where, where, because the outcomes that I have or you have that a lot of people are, are, are claiming that, that, you know, those three questions, uh, the answers yeah. to those three questions, right? right? Uh, they're claiming those answers because they haven't experienced specific scenarios where they might have to do something that is contradictory to what they answer. Uh, right, I guess you're... And, and, right. and the reason I, I'm saying that that they gave those answers is because government exists. Now, I'm not with... I know I understand that reform should exist throughout right. a whole bunch of things, right? Um, whether it be the taxes, you know, increasing them, decreasing them, not them being... You know, with all the variance and differences amongst people mm -hmm. and their ideas about what it should be when it comes to, you know, government rules and regulations. Um, some saying that it should be political, some saying that it should be related to religion, some saying that a whole bunch of things, right? Yeah. But what is... Because it seems to me that you're saying government shouldn't exist. Right, I am. Okay, then what would be an alternative? Okay, so, all right, so uh, let's look at what government is objectively. How would it exist today? Government, all it is objectively uh, is they have a monopoly on the services I want, right? I do want security, I do want roads, I do want uh, a post office, I do want, uh, I want like ABC, I, I still want liquor. <laughs> they have a monopoly on roads, on first class mail, delivering pieces of paper. They have a monopoly on law, on courts, on judges. Here in the tax from Virginia, they have a monopoly on distal spirits, the retail wholesale of alcohol. You have no economic freedom to cancel and subscribe as you would any other service. Like Netflix started to raise their prices, cancel and subscribe, go to Hulu, right? If uh, McDonald's raises their prices, go to Cookout, right? But when government raises their prices to taxes, there's nowhere else to go. Nor do you have the freedom to compete against their monopolies in order to provide, provide a better service that's not going to be harmful or abusive to you, the consumer. Like USPS, for example, they're $16 billion in debt. They have the whole market of first class mail to themselves. It is illegal and criminal for UPS, for FedEx, or DHL to compete in that market. They can only deliver packages. Uh, so that's what I mean by that, by objective. So without government, uh, without that monopoly on these services, you free up a huge market for anyone to compete, for anyone to provide it, to have freedom of competition, right? Which brings in lower prices and increased quality, right? So that's that's the absence of government, free so, market. So, so you think that that free market is the solution and is the kind of the alternative for the government? Oh yeah, I would say respect for property rights. Like okay. you own your own body, and I can never tell you what you can and can I do with your body, right? But a politician can. 
right? A politician to a female, they like last year, they try to force ultrasounds onto them. Um, you know, if they're going to get a, uh, an abortion, for example, right? It's a stranger dictating what you can and cannot do with your body. And they do the same thing, what you can and cannot place in your body, like cannabis, right? Okay. But you cannot tell the politician the same thing, right? So there's a top-down hierarchy, a political ruler and a tax slave kind of relationship you have with government. And I want to remove the entire relationship. You don't need strangers dictating how best your life should be lived. The only person that knows how best that should be met is, is you, right? Okay. So, so, so you're assuming as well, based on, I, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, please, 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 please. I'm assuming that you're concluding as well that religion shouldn't be. No, 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 you can believe whatever you want to believe, right? right? Because As you know that religion has, you know, rules and regulations right, right. And, and what is permissible and what is not based on faith. Right. So, are you also saying that religion No, 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 all right, so what ends up happening, you have, you have this particular uh, agency, organization, that, uh, that forces their beliefs violently through the threat of use of violence onto other people. Religion doesn't, right? So religion, you can believe whatever you want to believe as long as we're not violently forcing that onto anyone, right? So you can, uh, so instead of a monopoly on law that government has, you have a polycentric legal system, right? Much like when you move to an apartment complex that says cats are allowed but dogs are not, and here's the consequences thereof. You say, all right, I agree to the rules, I consent to the rules, I have my contract, right? I get my signature, and you have a real bond, you have real, um, I guess, a voluntary connection there right you don't have one with government so what if what if um, and this is why I asked that yeah 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 what if somebody who's walking down the street who happens to be from a particular religion mm -hmm. becomes against the other person who is also from that other religion right. or from another religion and is against the person's practices right and then it gets to a point where those two religions or those two people who have different ideologies generally speaking collide right uh, well, I guess you'll find, so the, the reason why there's a lot of collision with a lot of terms of group, F groups here, and like political groups as well, and religious groups, is because we're forced to live together. We have no freedom of disassociation. So under the United States of America, one super huge community, you don't have, if you didn't have government, you have thousands of rich, diverse communities instead of one big community. So then you have all these different communities to cater to your preference and to your needs. So you can have an apartment complex or a community that's 420 friendly, one next door that's not. You can have your Amish community, you can have your Mormon community, as long as, that's kind of what they want. They want to be able to practice their, in their own lifestyle, their own preferences, without no one forcing their own onto them in their community. So if you remove the government forcing their preferences on everyone, people finally don't have to be at war with each other or be uh, divided with politics, you know? Like you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, you're a Libertarian. Um, absolve the political divide and then we become, you know, more conscientious, respecting of each other's property rights, right? So what if, if um, foreign elements come into the country and because it's, what it seems to me is that you're abolishing borders right. by, by, yes. by doing this, right. right? So what if um, the person from the neighboring country uh, decides, well, we're, I'm going to come here mm -hmm. and I am going to bring my relatives and families and try to dominate the economy. Okay. Uh, all right. Great. Great. So we could talk there. So there's several things with that. One would be, I guess, the first easiest one would be when people see that there's so much freedom here. We're having because there's no government. People in other places that are still uh, in living in tax farms around the world will kind of want that same freedom too. So they themselves will help to liberate themselves and their community from government because they see all the success we're having here. The envy will drive them to kind of abolish their own government, right? Because they also want to be rich and wealthy and be have um, the respect for their own property rights. The second thing would be, so there's no more government means there's no more taxation, there's no more tax farms to take over. The only reason governments take over other governments is to take over the tax farm. Like the only reason Hitler wanted to take over France so quickly and faster in World War II was to take over the tax system. You take over the tax farms, it helps fund your war mission. But here's no taxes here, so there's nothing to take over. Okay, so a country like Saudi Arabia, for example. Right. Saudi Arabia doesn't have taxes. Uh, what, what do they have in Saudi Arabia? They don't have taxes. They don't have taxes at all? Okay, cool. And, uh, are, do they have question is, Yeah. My question is, um, they don't have taxes, and um, yet there are issues that occur there. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that the majority of your argument is revolved around rules such as taxes. Not just taxes. I mean, any rules, for example. For example, like uh, so, 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 so you're saying that no rules should be applied. Rules, rules can be applied, but contact. And who enforces these? Rules? You can force. So it's contractual rules. 
So for example, what ensures that I force these rules, and what ensures that you force these rules? Okay, like that, you know. Right, right, right. You know, random. Like if somebody do doesn't want to break, if someone doesn't want to abide by them, it just breaks a contract that they agreed to. Oh, that's perfect then. So kind of like uh, you have a credit score, right? Uh, your credit score can drop if you don't pay, repay the money that you made a word of honor that you will repay, right? Okay. So in the same way, if someone continues to break their contract. Yeah, I guess you have like an integrity credit, right? It's like, well, I don't know if I want to do business with you because you seem to keep breaking all your contracts. No one can enforce it. So even if I moved into an apartment complex that says cannabis is not allowed, but I smoke anyways, and they, and they find out about it and said, well, you agreed that $200 was the penalty. And I said, well, I'm not paying anything. Well, then no one else is going to want to enforce their contract with me. No one's going to invite me to their hotel, to their diner, uh, to, to their home. It's like, look, we can't trust you. you. You don't seem to be a person who keeps their word or honor. Right? Uh, so if it behooves me, it's more beneficial to, for, to just pay the $200 or find other alternative ways to uh, pay restitution. So you want to go back to what, what society evolved and then evolved it back, went back evolved to just tribal politics. Private politics, I guess I wouldn't call it politics anymore. I just call that as a... Um well, I mean, because that's technically what, what, what I'm assuming, yeah, 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 I'm assuming yeah, yeah, yeah. based on your vision, is that yeah. that's what's going to technically happen. Yeah. Because me being from Saudi Arabia. Right, right, right. And, and having a lot of tribal mm -hmm. politics and a lot of tribal issues, it seems to me that you're kind of describing what the scenario is in the desert. Scenario. Right. And, yeah. And, and then would you... And then that's what you would want though, right? Something contractual, something you voluntarily give consent to, right? Uh, like, I know in Saudi Arabia, I think they have a, uh, a religious rule that says, uh, you know, alcohol is uh, immoral, right? Uh, so it's not the government law that says, that enforces that, it's part of their religious beliefs, right? So it's not like a measure of success, hey, government made alcohol illegal, which is why nobody drinks. No, that's the social norms, right? Exactly, that's right? the social contract that between the people and the government. Right, and, and they agree upon that. Uh, but within, within that religious just belief in that community and that's wonderful uh, outside with government though you have no contractual relationship with government you have no uh, I guess you have no factual evidence to, to show that you have a contract like I could show you a contract with my uh, at t with my mortgage with my with car payments with um, a lot of services I have a contract with but there is no contract with government right and because of that they were able to escape uh, liability for their actions they have immunity like police have immunity if they were to you know transgress against you uh, state prosecutors if they were to hold evidence judges who pass opinions you know even if it hurts at both parties you know or hold you in contempt because he doesn't like what you're wearing um, they have immunity and I that is that I, I, that I don't like especially if I'm being forced to pay for their salaries um, so if we remove that you go to a society where interactions are based on contracts on agreements right uh, and that that's voluntary, and I wouldn't call that utopian. I want there to be problems. Problems are good. It just problems means are going to happen. Yeah, problems are going to happen, and that's a good thing because I want things to be better. That just means that there's another way we can achieve a better state, right? And, 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 and the question is, is that in this situation, don't you think that there's even in this no government system, mm -hmm. don't you think there's that there's going to be people who are going to be enforcing the law? Enforcing the law? Yeah, because you know, if if if, if, if because what you're going to have mm -hmm. is people abiding by their words there's going to be people who are going to break those words sure yeah right? there's going to be people who, 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 who are going to be outcasted from society due to these uh, I want to say issues. they'll be outcasted they'll just find other similar group people they want to live with uh, which are going to be considered the outcasts. Well, I guess everybody considers each other the outcasts. They'll no, probably not consider not us the outcasts. Not, not well, yeah, exactly. Right. So you're going to have a us against them kind of thing going on. That's, well, uh, That's how, so? how so? Because what, what you're saying yeah. is that there's going to be uh, these people yeah. who Whoa. are going to be considered you know, outcasts or outlawed or you know, there's going to be a score system like you said earlier. Right. Where based on them, your word is going to be kind of yeah, you yeah. know, you're 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 you're, you're binding. Yes, you know, yes, yes. Okay, right? so the people who don't uh, keep the word, you, you consider them outcasts. Well, they're going to be considered outcasts in society because they didn't keep their word. Right, right. Okay, right? so yeah, and so there'll be a program in place. So there'll be nonprofit organizations that says like, for example, like if you're a bad driver and you keep hitting someone, your points go up. Well, go to driver school or like uh, if you have problems with aggression, let's go see a therapist. Let's go see like AA, for example. So if you happen to not keep your word, let's talk about them. Maybe let's. let's go over into that you know there's still have people who care about each other care about support care about this individual who's outcast it's like look what's what's going on here why aren't you not able to, to keep your work keep your promises and let's let's go deeper behind beyond that to see where, where that's coming from yeah because uh, we would like to invite you back into society or because then you have thousands of communities so of course you could probably have one that's catered just to, to help those kinds of people who have kind of problems with uh, aggression or problems with uh, I guess understanding how to, how to keep their word maybe 
financial difficulties, for example. So what happens, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, this is wonderful, this is great. So what happens if somebody gets super, super drunk and decides to uh, get in a car and kill like a random bunch of people? He didn't mean to, right. he didn't mean to, yeah. but that happened. And then they, they, the person killed a bunch of people and whether the person was drunk, high, whatever. Mm -hmm. right? Um, and the person has 10 dead bodies on him. Mm -hmm. What happens to that person? Alright, so let's look at first how it happens here. Because okay. it happens here often. Um, government has a monopoly on roads, so there's a lot of potholes, so a lot of accidents still occur. Uh, so you have uh, this individual who, who one night out of the blue drinks so much and kills 10 people, right? right. And it happens here, for example. So. The people who should be involved in that interaction should be the victims or the victims' families, right? No one else should be involved, right? Only the people who were victimized, right? But here in government, everyone's involved in that when they send this person to prison, for example, you're forced to pay for that prison, even if you were not involved to begin with. So they force everyone to be involved in that situation when I was never there, but they're still taking money from you to taxes to fund a prison that they're going to send this individual to. Right. So, so who determines in this situation? Uh, the victims. The reparations will be determined. So, for example, maybe one family feels uh, sympathetic and uh, has remorse, for example, and just, uh, you know what, you don't owe me any reparations. The other families can still sue, they can still uh, seek reparations from this individual. So one way that could uh, help pre prevent a lot of this stuff is having insurance between each other. Like, for example, if you hit a car, you have insurance to pay to your policies if you hurt someone or cause a life to, to be injured, right? Uh, so there's similar kind of insurance policy we can have for each other in the event that some of us goes crazy, that kind of money can go off to pay off, uh, I guess, the reparations of the man of the victim's family. So what, what if the, the victim's families don't want that? They want blood? They want blood? Okay. So, all right, so you can have this too. So you can have, uh, like, these community rules, for example, that says if you uh, go... Uh, yeah, yeah. In the there goes government. Well, no, that's not government because these are, you get consent to. to who establishes these rules? You do. You, all right, so, for example, I come to you, you so you have maybe a thousand communities with a lot of different rules. Uh, you feel like, hmm, that's too constrictive for me, that's not too tolerable. I kind of like this. this, I could deal with this, I like this rule here. Like you have golf course communities that exist today, right? Okay. They have homeowners associations, they pay for the roads, and they have their own rules too, and, and their conducts of uh, decency there. Uh, so it's like, you know, I can live in that kind of community, right? So one of the rules that could be in there is, well, if we get into uh, a, a fight, for example, of aggression, uh, the agreement could be I pay $200, or it could be a pillow fight, or it could be two may enter, one may leave, or it could be um, I forfeit my life. But whatever you give consent so, to that. So, so, so these communities have their own form of government. I, would, yeah, I, wouldn't, I guess you could call it government at that point, but I wouldn't call it... Well, it technically is. Technically, I would call it uh, community rules. Like, uh, like the Etsy has rules, right? That's not a government. Right. Uh, eBay has rules in their own policies. Uh, the golf course communities have their own rules and policies. But I want to call that a government seems to enforce from the top down, whereas without government, it's the consumer who's on top because you get to choose. You well, can cancel or unsubscribe. So, so your issue is with the current state of government and not necessarily with the whole idea of government. I was both, I guess for me, I associate government uh, in, in terms of how it's always been enacted as uh, forcing opinions onto people without their consent or choice. Well, I mean, I guess, okay. Um, and I, I've heard there could be a loose definition as long as, long as it's voluntary and consensual. Sure. We'll call it whatever you want to call it. Call it a government, call it a community. As long as it's voluntary, as long as it's consensual, that's wonderful, right? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I understand. Um, yeah, man, I, I appreciate your time. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> these are great <laughs> questions. <laughs> My name is Cal. What's your name? I'm Wadden. Ahmad? Wadden. Wadden. Pleasure to meet you. Wadden. Wadden. <laughs> Everybody gets it wrong. <laughs> it's Wadden. What N? What N? Yeah, without the N, L. So what? There you go. Well. There you go. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I guess um, I'm a part of a non-political organization, okay. so it's mostly trying to enact a lot of this stuff. So pretty much just uh, turning to our community and turning away from government and politics altogether. Th that was just divides us, right? Yeah. Um, and eventually, eventually, I guess to get to the point where we have enough numbers here to we can all stop paying taxes and we can start respecting personal property rights. And then after that, I don't know what's going to happen. But as long as consensual and voluntary it doesn't matter right i understand that 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 you know that that's an interesting idea yeah it's very very interesting. <laughs> thank you thank you would you like some pamphlets uh yeah sure yeah. i'll take them all right cool oh those have really good questions what are you studying political science <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I would have had a lot more questions than I have. Uh, no, no, absolutely, my, absolutely. It was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, it was a pleasure to meet you too. <laughs> you take, take good care. care. Stamps, for example, you have no choice, right? There's nowhere else to go. It's illegal and criminal for FedEx, UPS, and DHL, for example, to compete. It's illegal for them to provide you an alternative for first pass mail. They can only deliver packages. It's illegal for you and criminal to compete entrepreneurially, therefore, against these monopolized services. In order to say, I can provide you a better service, it's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer. And at least those, those services will be voluntary. At least it can cancel and subscribe and you can compete. These areas that government controls violently and these monopolies, you have no freedom of choice. You have to give them your money, whether you want to or not, whether you agree to it or not. So, would you feel then, understanding a little bit more clear of the picture of the box, the government is a monopoly, that you can make maybe perhaps better economic choices. You're a mature, competent human being, you know how to allocate your own resources, and you don't need a stranger you've never met deciding that for you. I see the, the angle you're, you're taking on this, and at the same time, I pose the question, if, we'll say roads, basic infrastructure, sure. we're opened up to more, I assume you're trying to yeah, make a more free market, market essentially. A argument. free market, yeah, free market society. Okay. Free and voluntary. Okay. We're just not going to talk about this. What happens if the person who controls the roads, free and voluntary, works within that industry to fix prices? What if they be, decide that, you know, because they own so much and they have so much control, <laughs> What if they, in fact, essentially what you've eliminated without government regulation, without the government stepping in and saying, okay, you know, we'll take over this and we'll set the price ourselves. What if they decide that, you know, to own these roads, you have to pay exorbitant prices to them anyway. You have to pay a membership to ride on these roads. Sure. I mean, people are greedy and people do become corrupt. So it is nice to think that, you know, if it were free competition, a healthy economy, that would drive, you know, essentially competing road companies to make better, nicer roads, you know, do you think the roads today are really nice and safe to drive on? Fair point. Right? And you have no control or no other competitive market for you to go anywhere else to fill the potholes. You know, the cost of these roads are property taxes always increases. The taxes always increase. It always starts off with 1%, 2%. Now it's nearly half your income, right? So there's no free market competition to allow the opposite to occur for the, the cost of that to go down for quality to improve because they have outlawed competition. What if it never occurs? I mean, that was the issue that we had right, in so, the early 20s. Okay, so uh, actually, if you look in the history of roads here, roads used to be privatized. There used to be a competitive uh, roads pricing system here, and it, it was working great. The way that they would charge you was the width of your axle. If the width of your axle was very thin, they charge you a little bit more because you're creating ruts. If it was wide, you're kind of evening it out, so they charge you less, and it worked greatly. Except government has a monopoly on security, so they weren't able to enforce their own rules on those particular roads, and so they were able to, they were driven out of business. Government then came and stole those lands, eminent domain, monopolized the roads, and that's this is the system we know of today. Would like uh, to come in? Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. sure, sure. So your bigger issue is, is again, what you pointed yeah. out is that after you know antitrust and, and that sort of issues, the people who wanted to still control it stopped being private companies and they moved more into the government as a means by which to control. Yeah, which the is antitrust laws are interesting. The a lot of the historical examples that we have of big antitrust stuff was super beneficial to the monopolists. I mean, in the case of steel railroads, for example. And then once railroads got, you know, basically cut out, cut out by people that, you know, through the highway system, you know, you are able to have trucking companies that don't pay any more for the highways than yeah, you or me. Yeah, I don't own a car, you know? So, so they kind of like charge me and if I don't pay, they put me in jail through taxes to pay for their trucks to be able to compete with the railroads and yet that's allegedly, according to you, correct if I'm wrong, an example that you give for something that we need government for. But look at the situation that we end up with on the road. You can make an argument for basic infrastructure as long as there's money to be made. Where the problem happens is where it's like, oh, this area is no longer profitable, so I'm not going to maintain it anymore because that's what a company decides. That happens now in Richmond. Go look at where the potholes are. Go look at the roads in some of the poorest neighborhoods. Go look at, I mean, just go look at them. They're really not, you have like basically the kind of the stereotypical rich white lady, but it could be anyone of higher socioeconomic class. Fine. And they kind of complain to the city because they have time off. They don't have to work. They can call the city 20 times and they have clout, you know, and they, <laughs> I've seen it, right? You know, um, and houses that are, 
are down along the river versus houses that are exactly over. so the the infrastructure that you're making a claim for the government needing to create the is can run poorly but so can a company right, right. certainly certainly so the roads that are built today are already outsourced to businesses yeah. to begin with but the lowest bidder the lowest of uh, what well, the politically connected so you yourself government doesn't build anything they outsource that to private business to do it already and so what then what is government then is the middleman getting in the way of you deciding the best company to fill up those potholes you know to have a credit rating system to have a customer review five stars out of five star ten years in the business when we have time to sit down when would the city have time to sit down what would be an effective system by which for the city to make that decision uh, and what decision which company is the best to build the roads for the city of Richmond well they do that they do sit down and do that. They do that they because they're elected, yeah. but they're elected yeah. officials. That's yeah. their job is to do that. Oh, absolutely. My job is not to sit down and do that. So when would I find the time to be part of oh, that no, conversation? Oh, no, no. I think, I think you, you raised a brilliant point at the very beginning of the conversation, which is how am I supposed to know how to do everything? Don't I need people, like, people to basically kind of be my counsel and tell me, you know, we have the city council, right? Isn't it advantageous to me to rely on the opinions of experts? And I think it is. Um, but basically, what government does is, if 51%, the government here in America, if 51% of any locality tells you who the expert is, you're now being forced to listen to that expert. So if you say, you know what, I really think I could do better, or no, I really don't trust their expert, I trust this other expert, there are so many instances where you're not, regardless of who you trust or who you prefer, you're not really free to act in accordance with their advice from a different expert, even if it's harming no one. But in the same like medications, for example, there's so many. I'm sure you've heard many examples of medications you can't get in America because they're outlawed, and you have people like going to Canada, to Mexico, and getting certain treatments that are helpful to them, and their kid survives, and it's amazing. It's on ABC News, yeah. and there are right? some. It happens a lot. Lobbying is a problem. Yes, I think everyone can agree that the amount of the, the lobbying that has slowly been increasing over the years has become a, an issue. I don't think anyone can disagree with that. Yeah. But. There are legal means by which you can deal with that as well, through creating laws and, oh, yeah. and bills that limit the amount or ability for lobbyists to effectively make corrupt policy that only financially benefit them. Even if it's not corrupt, though. So you have you know fifty one percent of Richmond that doesn't want a, you know doesn't want to or let's take the stadium in Richmond Is where the fifty one I do believe it's not well, that's how democracy works. Democracy. The majority. I just mean if you have a majority vote. The majority over the minority. The majority has to, but it's not. It's very rarely is it like fifty one percent. No, no, no. I just it's like, you're right. Yeah. There, in fact, there are laws actually that say like okay for this particular bill you need like sixty percent of the vote. You need like the overwhelming. Right. Vote. You have to be outnumbered yeah. Uh, yeah. for other people's preferences to yeah. be going against your. And how do you feel about that to be outnumbered against the individual? I, if I get a bunch talking about community issues. Well, I mean, that's, that's what democracy is. If I get a couple of my friends and we outnumber you, now we win because now we can force our preferences against you. I mean, it's not the kind of society you want to live in. And with the, the one who's outnumbered is the one that suffers the greatest. But you don't want, you don't, okay, we certainly <laughs> want to avoid suffering. True. At the same time, though, we all trust that each other is not going to be so egregious to one side or the other that your rights your happiness are ultimately so infringed upon that like but they are like that you are looking towards an alternative form of government because well, you are displeased with well, the well, they are that's the situation i'm in that's where i'm in that's where most people are yeah. i nearly have my uh, you know the, the income of many of my friends many of my, yeah. my family are, are stolen from it they have no economic freedom from that from that choice yeah. um especially in, in terms of the rules that they pass that are backed and enforced by balance and threats and thereof um you know you, again you look at um well, you mentioned earlier about what anarchy is and stuff like that in regards to government. We're not advocating for, I guess, an alternative for a government for, or any kind of government at all. Just that voluntary and of interactions that you already agreed upon in the first two questions. You don't use violence to solve your personal problems. Let's start there on that, I guess, fundamental principles that we already share. Let's let's start with the plurality of nonviolent solutions and solve our problems there as a community. Uh, instead of uh, referring to an agency, an organization that only knows how to solve problems through that singular way, a threat of and use of violence, the majority rule, mob rule. We could still rely on an agency or a person, uh, a, you know, someone to give us guidance. We we'll still have consumer reports. That's not going to disappear without yeah. government. That just means that there's some market availability for some to be entrepreneur enough to provide uh, that, that kind of service that the people want, uh, which is voluntary. People can cancel and you're not forced to pay for it. But the, contract, the government contracting system as it is now already allows for that to a degree. They are, the contracts are not flat rates. They are sure, absolutely. Right, but it's a kind of a winner take all, right? Oh yeah, no. If you win the if you win the yeah. contract, you win right. the contract for a set amount of years. Yeah, right. and for many of them, there's all sorts of different contracts and services. But the point is that 
you don't really have any say about it. You can try to vote for a person that you think will have, a, you know, favor certain contracts over other contracts, but you know all of the people that are even putting in contracts are pinging them off. They do report, though. <laughs> like, when, when yeah. the city council, when a government, when the, yeah. the Senate sits down and is like, let's look over government contractors yeah. in this subcommittee, that is reported. They do yeah. tell you who they are looking to purchase from. Sometimes. But Unless like, it's a DOD contract, in which case. <laughs> but you yes. still can't say no. You still, yeah. you still, you still, there's a whole process. But you elected that person. I didn't elect anybody. Maybe you didn't even vote well, for them. you didn't vote. Right? Maybe, maybe you voted for another guy. Well, if you, didn't, if you voted for the other guy and the other guy didn't win, and yeah. the new guy is voting So you for suffer for four years until yeah. finally your salvation comes through one person who has all the answers for, for you. For the next four years. Um, no, no, I you're mean, talking about contracts. Now, uh, wouldn't you want to have a society based on contracts? You know, real tangible contracts? Like, for example, if you had a government, wouldn't you want to have a contract with your government? I do have a contract with the government. Can you show me? The con oh, can, can you show me your signature? Can you, can you show me your contract with the government? By, having, by being a United States citizen, I'm, you know, with the, within the contract that is the Constitution. Your signature is on the, con on the Constitution. You, what means do you have to hold them accountable? The same means that they have to hold themselves accountable to it. We all agree to live in this society by this rough set of guidelines, of rules, guidelines, that are we consider to be immutable. Do, really? We can rectify them. We can, <laughs> we can adjust those. They're malleable to some extent. And they're guidelines, not concrete rules. But we all agree that... So you agreed, so you were alive back then 200 years ago with the uh, 37 other founding uh, tyrants and you signed your name on it. Well, let me ask you the question, without getting like, try to be like, whoa, whoa, you know, just, I don't agree to it. So what, okay. you know, That's where does that, point. but like, if you're free to agree to it, I, th I don't think there's anything wrong with you wanting to agree to those terms, but I think that the people that don't agree should be allowed to not have to do those things and suffer those consequences. That's an interesting point. See what I'm saying? Well, what, what is the recourse then if you... If you don't agree to the U.S. Constitution, mm -hmm. essentially, you don't agree to. I don't. I am already there. Yeah. yeah. What then is the recourse? What? I'd say I'd say most people would say then, well, then you don't get to benefit from what the government sets up. But from your particular standpoint to. already, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't collect social security. I don't collect welfare. I don't collect food stamps. I. I or uh, I don't have. <laughs> Medicare, Medicaid, I qualify for all of those, and I've paid into all of those. And actually, if I don't pay in, I get arrested potentially. But I don't collect any of them. I use the roads, they're kind of the only way to get around because the roads were seized. The roads used to be privately owned, they were seized through eminent domain when the city of Richmond incorporated. So, so you're principal issue. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, yeah. I'm kind of screwed you don't on something. Agree to the Constitution. Yeah. You don't pay into the government programs, you're not requesting government aid. Right. But your issue is that you have to pay because you're in the country. You have to pay a tax. You have to pay a portion of your income to something you essentially don't agree to. And let's, yeah, and not just, when we say have to pay, let's, let, let's walk through that. What does that mean, I have to pay? Let's say I don't pay. What happens? That depends on how much money you owe. Say, no, I, but a, well, say I don't pay. Let's say you, pay for, you don't pay for 10 years, and that's when the IRS gets displeased. Because under the IRS viewpoint, if yeah. you live in this country, yeah, if you own exactly. property in this country, you've already agreed to the Constitution. Whether yeah. you want to agree to it or not, you've already agreed. Yeah, and so, so then they will come after you for what you're, what they yeah. perceive as. You know, and how do they, it. how do they come after? Me? Well, it's been ten years. It's not like you haven't been. No, no, I'm saying, how asked. do they? What do they do? I, yeah, but I say no. I don't agree to that. No, thank you. Just like if you politely me, ask me for ten dollars, they know they'll they politely remind you. And I say no. That I keep saying no. What happens? These are the consequences. Inevitably, they will eventually say, okay, well, we're going to take you to the U.S. court system. And I say no. What happens? Okay, if you're denying the U.S. court system, then that. I do deny. It. I'm saying what happens. You already know this. I'm trying to get there. What happens? You've gotten arrested. You the right. court is. Yeah. You dodge the court question, though. The court is supposed to be this public forum of. No, I didn't dodge it. Why. Well, you would disagree. Right? You said I don't want to go. They have a monopoly on arbitration. Yeah, I, 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 I disagree that. with that too. I don't think that should exist. I don't. Not courts. I, I want courts. The I want US government court. No. Yeah. I want so private no arbitration. Court. Yeah. No tax court. No court. No taxes. No government. Uh, you mean criminal court. Criminal no, court. Not not the U.S. government criminal court. So not federal court. Or state court. Or Richmond City Court. So how we have on the court system then? We don't. We, we just let's not. <laughs> yeah. So government has yeah. a monopoly on, on, so uh, you, on law. Okay. You don't have no. You, instead of a polycentric the legal system. <laughs> yeah. well, there, there's, there's polycentric law. There are many solutions to this. There's a. Uh, Probably more pages written about this than you'd actually have time to read. Yeah. But basically, the third party arbitration. So, you and I have a dispute, we could go to him. And we could agree that we'll listen to whatever he says. What if I paid him off? What if I paid him? Well, then what if I paid him? What if we paid off the government? Then, before we go talking to him, we look at his history as a. Uh, 
being a person who gives good and yeah. fair and partial opinions, you look at his customer review rating, five star or five star, fair and imbalanced, great, I, let's go to this person as a third party. Of course, if it was he was found to be uh, guilty of such, such uh, I guess, bribery, no one would want to do business with him if he, he committed his fraud. Huh? What if he goes 20 years? What if he has a successful career as an adjudicating party? Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. And then Same thing with government. Finds out he's you're not making, you're right, not but making at least an argument. He can be held them. personally liable yeah. for that. The judge cannot. They have a total immunity. Same as with the state prosecutor. You're forced to pay for it, but they have immunity even if they withhold evidence. Same thing with bribe, the police services. Yeah, how many bribe scandals and yeah, happens all the time. And but you can't sue them. Persecuted at the same time. It's not like those. Oh, very few. Very few. Very few. You can't. It's very rare. You can't. You can't. Look at complaints can't lodged judge. against police departments to actions taken against police officers. You can't that ratio is huge. You can't sue a judge. That's true. You can't sue but a state the prosecutor. Only one recently has been finally rulings, sued, but that's it. Their rulings and their adjudications can be called into question and then thrown out. But but anyway, the point right. is, and if that happens, sure, sure. their career goes down the toilet instantly because that's the, essentially their credibility. Any other cases they do after that, yeah. same thing with their credibility, credibility in a free market arbitrator. Yeah. Their career is done. The reputation is done. Diminished. They won't get a job anyone. No one will. Go for their arbitration. No one's going to hire that. Twenty uh, years on a career path. Like what if all the adjudications he did for twenty years, and yeah. he gets caught doing bribery? Like, do we have to call back everyone he ever adjudicated? What do you do? Exact same yeah. scenario, but, but with we the have government. the power to enforce that with government. Whereas, like, he's just a just some guy in Richmond, Virginia. Like, yeah, you can't, you can't see a judge. How would the power? How would the government do in this in the same scenario that you think? Have you heard of Annie Dukin? Any? No, I haven't. Annie Dukin was a forensic scientist, uh -huh. and she's a forensic toxicologist. And from 2000 to 2009, she was essentially dry labbing, which is to say that she would take drug samples, test a non-representative sample of it. If it tested positive, she assumed all the other evidence would test positive as well. That it is the cardinal sin of forensic science. You wow, do yeah. not dry lab. You, do, you always test, you always make sure and she didn't. She assumed basically that cutting corners to make make the same. Her dollar, productivity yeah. went up. She got promotions for it. Right. She exactly. got awards for it. Yeah. You can blame the system, but ultimately, Andy Dukin chose to yeah. cheat. I think it was the final sum total was forty three thousand cases. Wow. And every one of those cases, except for the most violent offenders, where they had other evidence other than Dukin's testimony and Dukin's evidence to suggest that this person had committed this crime, those people will go free in the next year. Yeah. And that's what will happen. But I mean, this is an agency that was already hired by government. Yeah. So this, they're, they're being subsidized already by government. Government is already paying her salary. So first, there's no fair and impartial review in there because she's employed by the government. Well, but she did get reviewed by the government. I of mean, course. Even, even the president can be impeached. Uh, well, theoretically. She was reviewed. She's serving. I don't think you would years. advocate for a prison system. No, no, but society either. 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 So I mean, I think it, I understand the example, um, but in that particular example, the lab lost its accreditation. They can no longer, yeah. they no longer well, function. Well, the lab yeah. <laughs> lab director was almost brought up on charges himself. Annie Dukin is serving time in prison for lying under oath several times. Which I don't think she should be there either. But. <laughs> I mean, with your time, she kind of ran into them. She put a lot of people in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Be in prison. I, I just, you know, you don't. It's not fair to do that. Hitting, hitting doesn't solve problems. <laughs> you hit me, so I hit you. Oh right. no, actually, I'll put you in a box for ten years. It doesn't really solve much. She can't it's pay restitution to the people that she's. Uh, yeah, she could never uh, pay restitution. No, I know. Anyway. Oh, but she's in, and she's an occasion. So the the yeah. people who she's victimized now her life have the opportunity too. to <laughs> seek out restitution or yeah. reparations for those damages. What? Not what much better possible restitution I mean, that you from Miss Dukin that system, could make up for, so for the people that yes, she missed uh, to throw into a case for three years. Yes, I would, I would seek yeah. restitution. But I would seek damages from that. But of course, in the government system, you have no option or choice or freedom to, to seek that out. Uh, th they robbed yeah, you of that opportunity. It doesn't matter. Then she has an opportunity to work to in repay that. System, but you don't have that opportunity no because the government has enslaved her and threw her into a case. She doesn't. I don't have the choice. I'm the victim. People who are not involved in the situation don't have a matter of say in that choice. The people who have been victimized by her are the ones who have a say in choice. If you are not involved, it's not, if you want to let it go, then let it go. But me, myself, I would want to seek restitution. Government robs me of that opportunity. What if rather than it be essentially being a restriction of physical force, essentially like you sit in this box for X amount of time and you consider that time done. What if the prisoner was instead instructed to provide a useful service to society, essentially like, you know, no, they did, she did not offend society. Well, who's society? Individual people uh, only exist. Uh, as, I would, uh, you can say if I did a crime, I don't owe. If I 
I committed a way. crime against you. I don't owe him money. I don't owe anyone anything. I ain't paid like a restitution reparations to you. Uh, now, to have a government prison children, system, you force everyone kind of now to pay for something whether I mean, they want it or not. I, I, I I pay. Pay. You force everyone now to be involved whether they're the victims or not. But and that's yeah. what ends up happening uh, with government. Uh, what so do you imagine you would happen like if we didn't have prison system unjustly, when we instead so allowed? You're looking, the you're if we did not have over a million people in cage and being dehumanized, many of them for uh, victimless so crimes, I don't know. It sounds wonderful. Crime. And you do have to be careful. There's arguments to be made for victimless crimes. Arguments, really. Well, I mean, so so without a government monopoly law, you have a polycentric system. Instead of one giant force community based on the majority, there are a lot of people that will lose their job. You eliminate the prisons because you don't believe in the cage. They aren't allowed the prisons. Prison system uh, private though. As They've been privatized. They're, they're not privatized. Uh, yeah, they're, they're contracts. They're still government agencies. I mean, they're still kind of get like uh, without government, you can still have. If their money comes from taxation, it's not private. Like, there's no. They're their customers. The government. It's not a private agency. Right. It's sort of like. But what do you yeah, do? Mean, like power. when we'll say it's a violent private thing. company, but, yeah. but uh, they and he's sort of killed. Have we'll, we'll say yeah. he's affected a hundred people for whatever reason. It's a violent crime. What do you do? There's no, we're not going to hold them in a cage anymore. What do yeah. you propose be done? So in these particular communities, they have the rules that they voluntary consent to. You have a real contact with the poly legal system that you subscribe to. And then when those particular rules, for example, like moving to apartment complexes, cats are allowed, but no dogs are allowed. And here are the consequences thereof. If you were to, uh, I guess, uh, negate those rules, same thing will happen in these communities. Some guy broke one of the rules, murdered a few people. Great. You already agreed to the consequences thereof of paying maybe $200 restitution or maybe going to a case yourself, but you get consent to the consequences and people agree to those consequences of reparations and how that will be dealt out kind of like if you hit a car you have your insurance company that kind of covers some of the damages but your your points will go up uh, you, you agree to those particular rules what if it could also be it could also be two may enter one may leave whatever you agree to it could be it could be a pillow fight you know you, you you aggress against me we have to go to a city scroll we have to beat each other with pillows but at least it's consensual you agree to the consequences and that's how those community communities what, what yes and that's how it will work they will all have those. different punishments. yes no yeah exactly you have you have thousands of different polycentric arbitration uh, well, systems a lot of all different these communities. communities already have different punishments right. so i mean like states and counties yeah, yeah. it'll just true. be like that but cities. a lot more diverse what if one county is predominantly white and they have some rather racist viewers? Probably all the non-whites would leave that county. Yeah, I would not want to live there, and that's great. I'm glad that they can... Uh, we'd, uh, we would have all of the races somewhere else. Finally, we know else. where they are. <laughs> They'd all move to this one county where we it was We can avoid illegal, them, where they never said, offer. Like, no one's yeah. allowed to serve non-whites well, here, know and where they no are one now. would probably go there. Right. Of trade also. Yeah. There probably wouldn't be as many people trading it's Beautiful. Right, exactly. So like I open a competitive business that's open to everyone while they limit theirs to a very small share of the market. Eventually, I'm more open to, to the market share. I eventually help drive them out of business. And that's the best kind of, I guess, enjoyment of victory you can have over a racist organization like that. I mean, you can look at the KKK, for example. When you push values to get for non-aggression, and it's difficult for those values to go backwards when they're, once they're adopted. I mean, do you know anyone today that advocates for slavery? Do you have any friends that advocate for slavery? I'm not, not that, that I'm name. aware of. Right? Or, 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 or a prison. A, a prison, people, yeah. People well, prison. Actually, there's, there's one guy on the Midwest that could say a little thing. No, do you have any friends? Do you have friends? Uh, or so, no, like, some of them are that, that so talk about slavery, no one's going to say yes, but the example but, we have of prison is, yeah. I would call it slavery. I would call it's it slavery, true. Oh, but yeah, some of them are good Like, you pick your friends. It could be slavery. Or not like government. There's a guy, actually, up in Northwest who has this like huge acres of like a piece of town and he's trying to invite all these racist people to move there but none of them want to have anything to do with him. I uh, he was trying to like make a white supremacist. Right, yeah, but he was like, and we could take over the city council but he's been doing that for years and no one's moved there. You have uh, several decades ago, the numbers of the KKK numbered in the, in the thousands, in the hundreds, and now there's less than a thousand left. It's hard to recruit the youth. You know, the, the, the values that we have today against racism is difficult to go backwards. So I mean, that's yeah. essentially what we have to do. Push forward for equality well, for you. as individuals, for uh, against the initiation of force and that's you know the work is already there once we kind of help pave the way for that can we can we go back to something to yeah, intervene yeah, please, please, please. but there's a lot of i think we're doing a lot of well how would you solve this problem or what about this or how yeah. would you compare this solution to this solution i want to go back to kind of the moral premises and say which i thought we were on a good track um at least respect wise when i was saying well i don't i don't agree to the constitution i don't want to do those things and you were like oh that kind of makes sense and I'm wondering how you advocate, and this isn't a hypothetical, this actually is me right here, like how you advocate I should be dealt with, or what what would it's you advocate choice. other people do to me in light of this? Because it's I a hard think, choice, because it's a complex right. issue. Yeah. Essentially what you're saying is this. I'd like to just be left, you know. From the government standpoint, and, and doing my thing. Walking on the bricks, 
below your feet is benefiting from the fact that these bricks were paid for by the government. Therefore, you are benefiting from the system in some meager way that there is not. If this cost a dollar to be here, I would have the choice to either pay that dollar or not stand right here, depending from on whoever owned standpoint, it. the fact that yeah. these people aren't armed, dangerous, and otherwise attempting to take the shirt off of your back is also benefiting from the government's. You think that so, uh, a piece well, of paper that someone writes that well. murdering each other is not okay is what prevents everyone from killing each other? That they have no values against the initiation of force? No, I think Usually people are most, common sense. mostly I think it's the fact that people are inherently violent and having an armed paramilitary so people force. Are, so you're saying people are inherently evil and violent? Well, they're inherently greedy. So then the last thing you would want to do then, if everyone's oh, is, is evil and inherently greedy, the last thing you want to do is have a small Usually. group yeah, of those people that get violent greedy. when somebody's greedy. trying to greedy impose can lead something. To a lot of Things. But the question is, the question is, what do you think is a moral response to my stance? I'm saying I wish to be peaceful. I don't wish to steal from anyone. I won't. I promise I won't. I put. I, I pro I'm actually a monk. I'm a stoic monk, and so I'm. A, I'm peaceful. I don't want to anyone to go to war. I won't do it. I won't <laughs> hurt anybody. You know, and I don't want anyone else to hurt me. And when people say, "Hey, do this, or I'll hurt you," you know, I'm in the position where sometimes I decide to do in it. In a morally driven I society. Don't. Well, I'm asking you personally, what do you, like, what do you think should be done with me? If I had supreme control in a morally driven society, the best way to handle it, the nicest way to handle it, would be to carve out a piece of territory which is currently undeveloped or otherwise unused. Mm -hmm. It's not particularly desirable for anyone to think. And essentially say, if you don't agree to the Constitution, you don't have to leave the landmass that is North America. <laughs> But a reservation. you bring the reservation to go here. <laughs> a reservation. We'll assume you don't want to be taxed if you live here. Like the Res Japanese internment camp. Uh, where well, we're no, no like, that was let's give a real example like Indian reservations, American Indian reservations. Right. One of the worst this examples is, of government. Well, well, that is literally the what they did, right? They, they said, allegedly, you have some sovereign claim to your own self government, and we're going to recognize that by giving you, right? The US government came and stole it effectively from those people, yes. shove them into these small lands, yes. and Mike, that's what you're saying, and your ideal society where you get to be the moral, because the only other option, <laughs> there's a limited number of options, because essentially the government, why not let me just be, free? you know I'm peaceful, I'm out here being a nice guy, I'm not hurting anybody, why not let me just one walk around and be because myself? Because one person is fine, one person, you know, 10,000 10, people in the whole of the U.S. Mm -hmm. who essentially disagreed to the Constitution, and don't want to be taxed, don't have to pay taxes, but want to walk around and otherwise just be completely peaceful, don't want any government assistance beyond them. Yeah, ground that they it. are walking yeah. on. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love it. That's fine at 10,000 people. But what happens when that catches on and it's like, oh, whoa, I'm yeah, whoa, whoa, billion. whoa, whoa. Let's think about it. What happens if that catches Everyone on and you had apply for that? So let yeah, me, let me, let me, let me for this. Government. Okay, yeah. so and now we have. Well, can we answer that we question? Have, we have societies that are picking out their own rules, right? And so you don't like the rules of one land in this society that you've made, right? So what would you do in that system if you didn't like the rules of that one I guess one you community? would probably move around or you could persuade the community to have different rules maybe? Okay, or? so you could yeah. do that now. The, the thing is, whenever you talk about anarchy or atheism, atheism, everyone Whoa, believes in atheism. something. <laughs> everyone, no, but it's, it's the only idea where everyone believes exactly. in something. Same thing with same thing with anarchy. There's always some sort wait, of wait, okay, okay, rule. You I wanna, just I don't want. You just don't want to call it. I hear what you're saying, but I want to cut it off because I want to go back to but this. You see the issue with that. Wait, though, wait. I want to cut this is, off because I want to go back to this. Anything can we, you say can work here. No. It's just whether or not you put the name garment I'm not going in. Anywhere. Can I? Let's go back to this. This is great. Yeah, yeah, let's go back what to would this. happen if all of the people acted like I just described? No. Well, let's. That was your question. What would happen if there were? A hundred thousand. I don't want a million. And that, no, they said well I said, right? I don't want I don't wanna and not just I don't want to pay taxes. Like I do want to pay things that I think are beneficial. I will donate to charity. I will help other people. You create a thousand micro economies that well, and then eventually one of them gets the idea lack of infrastructure in this country. And we have a military base. And they don't and they don't. Who would have I'm gonna take their stuff? <laughs> Which is well, happens. And they don't. The thing is <laughs> that we have these has happened micro before. The human history has shown us that when right. you have military strength like that. Well, well, where's the military strength coming from? It's not coming from me. If there were people like me, we wouldn't have military strength. But right? the whole if, there, if I were no, but I'm saying if you you were they asking what would happen like if you allowed space. me. If like, like how else would there be more people like me? Societal based. 
iPad have to do with like how people think? Do you think a nonviolent solution exists? Just like, yeah, 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 I think it does. And the thing is do that- Do you think that that's gonna open you up to being assaulted by a violent- do you think yeah, well, like, enough let me let me try it. Violent, you know, they will be I mean, have the freedom to yeah. at risk. against the violent perpetrator. Let me try it. You know what I mean? Like that's all I'm asking at the very least, right? Like you don't have to like you don't have to try it. You can pay tax and stuff, but let me try it and let the others of us try it. Like at the very and then maybe you can look at us and say, are they living in a way that I find advantageous? Is it working for them? Like, are they solving their problems? Are they happy? You know? And and then more and more people might want to. But what's the reason why I'm not allowed to do that? Because the principal issue is you, you would need land to do this. Well, why? Where else are you going to do Right here. Well, I'm right everyone. here. Like, what's the problem? Right what's, like, what, what problem am I causing? Who, who am I hurting? Who am I... I mean, nobody, I'll tell you, you know. It's not your, that you're hurting. You're hurting by not contributing is the theory. The well, argument but the I am contributing. Involving. I contribute to many people. I volunteer... I voluntarily <laughs> tutor refugee youth from Burma because their government is so horrible to them. They came here with a slightly little bit more, you know, freedom. Only and I slightly. Go and, yes, really, only slightly. And I go and I help them learn English and learn mathematics. I volunteer my time uh, to giving... Uh, food and clothing to homeless people at Tabernacle Baptist Church. I'm saying, I contribute. I do it of my own free will. I went up to Northern Virginia, Arlington uh, this past Wednesday to go even to a government court to try to help a man that was being Not falsely accused of a crime. As much. Yeah. So contributing to a system you never use is also sort of like okay. kind and contribution. Of I'm trying to peaceful. impose yeah. your values on somebody. And it can almost be considered yeah. as a type of violence, even though it's not inherently right, to somebody punching Right, but then that's when you go to a different community. That, that, that's, that's when you <laughs> Yeah, but you if there's, there's like a around. super arching yeah. national yeah. community, I'm, then like a government like okay. this, we don't like even federal need anything. community, okay. then there might be a problem. I'm, so so I'm asking, let us, let us do that. that is, Make it voluntary for all the people like you that think, you know, I don't, you know, I want these people, I want people to contribute, I want to form a group of people that contribute. There's no reason you have to do that geographically. Like, you can be there and there and there and there and there and there and there, and you all contribute to your one structure, and then that structure just, you know, gives out things, so you could, uh, you know, you pay money, and then if you don't have much money, you would be part of that group, and you might get free okay. food or something. Let's continue with the thought experiment yeah, then. Right. So, this is allowed to happen. Let's just say I'm allowed to keep being the me and I don't. Right? The government yeah. says, fine, you can try it. But they're not going, they, they won't step in. Anymore. So like, no, but you haven't asked for any supplies or aid or anything yeah. other than just to just be able to walk around the country. Fine. But I don't call the police. Are you, are you protected? I've never called I've never called the police for my own Okay, security. so you're not, okay. Moving on. And I wouldn't, that. I wouldn't. Yeah. So then. So wait, what would you do? What would you, well, so I can give you plenty of actual examples. I've done it. I've done okay. I've done plenty of things. Go ahead. <laughs> what, would you, Go ahead. what would happen if someone will say, yeah. you have a home? Yeah, I do. I live in a house. You do? Homes are nice. <laughs> what if you blocks away? You're no longer protected by the government or you're no longer theoretically protected by the government. I'm not right now. No one's there stopping what if, what if someone takes the house and you say, give me my house back and says, no. Right. What will you do? I would if he refused to give me my house back. You would take it back. I yeah. I, I might consider taking it back. Maybe not. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe he's just you know too powerful or something. You know. Because I mean that's that's the crux that you're really yeah. you're really opening up. Well, there's so, a good. Wait, 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 wait. What would you do? Call well, him. And be like, hey, can't live. I'm not there's a perfect it. example of that. There's a there's a big group of people and they take houses um, from individuals and they have this kind of this big room where they bring you in and if you object to it, uh, you file a bunch of paperwork, uh, argument, argument, and they pay you some piddly sum for your house. Um, and let's call the government and they do it with eminent domain. Uh, I have a friend that's a he's past Virginia bar, he's a lawyer from William and Mary Law School and he's right now uh, compiling a report on all the different eminent domain laws in every 50, all the 50 states in America. And eminent domain seizures are exactly that. that. They take your house from you, right, and give you something if they want to, um, and you have no recourse to it. So we actually do have the exact example that you have. The biggest example of that is the government. Um, so what would I do if the government stole my house? I guess it'd be gone. What would I do if some non-government individual stole my house? I might, I might actually have recourse against that person. I might, might be able to go talk to their friends, people they do business with, and say, this man stole my house. And they might say, hey man, give him his house oh, back, or I'm not gonna- How you know the person's business contacts? So, I mean, I could follow 
follow them around, see where they go. We're not right? saying like he so suddenly becomes in and then they call like obtaining information. Right. Actually, I have, this, this kind of happened solutions recently as well in as Florida. There was a, a veteran who left and came so back like after after two years, and he found his house already occupied by somebody else. It took a community of a lot of people to kind of, I guess, they have the social ostracism working out, and they left. They abandoned because they were making claim that we live in this house now. It's like, oh my God, it's like strangers. The sheriffs couldn't do anything. They said, well, this seems like a civil matter, so they couldn't do anything. The government couldn't even help this guy. So there's also yeah. If, if you bought a house yes. and someone's like, hey, I was just gone and the, so bank, he's, he's the bank assumed I wasn't here anymore. So like, but you paid the bank money. What do you do now? Well, everyone should. Yeah, yeah. So and someone's violating and uh, trespassing on my property. Uh, but you're not really, but you're not really the aggressor here. You just purchased what you thought was a legal transaction from exactly. a bank, right? And all. So what do you do? But someone's in my house now. No, no, no. You're the person who bought the house. I bought the house. And there's someone who came back like, hey. This is my house. Well, like, well that's odd because I purchased this. Me, okay, you're asking me what I would do, but I don't have. A, I'm telling you, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I would gladly take on the responsibility of dealing with that problem on my own. Then gladly. Someone else. Yeah. Well, well, I'm saying, but I, I would also just, all I'm doing is I'm asking, and literally what I'm out here doing is I'm asking that other people um, treat me peacefully because I'm out here being peaceful. Um, and the people, one well, of the biggest group of people that I want is the government. Now, if the government treated every person peacefully, that it would, they would just stop existing. <laughs> I mean, that is a contradiction That's in terms, true. right? But that has a yeah. lot more to do with the fact that yeah. there are, while there are nice people out there, mm -hmm. there are many more who are not. Sure, sure. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying there aren't violent people or that you might not have to fight those people with violence if you have certain values. What I'm saying is, or I'm asking a question is, isn't it immoral to initiate violence against a peaceful person? I'm an example. And how do you handle me? Isn't it immoral? And if it is immoral, what kind of system would you advocate for? Wouldn't you advocate for? You seem to be too yeah. terribly pleased about my reservation <laughs> idea for. Well, what are you going to make? Fourteen yeah. to go over right. there. That and involves kidnapping. Rather, that involves. Uh, rather, you're okay with saying without government, I can move so somewhere. So, like in Detroit, there's a government. Uh, oh, no, 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 government no, has collapsed. Have here. They have a no, lot of no, unfunded no, no, liabilities. No, no, no. It takes over an hour well, for the police around, to respond to 911 calls. They don't actually work 24 hours, like seven days a week. In right parts of Detroit, they don't show up there. There is a private business though called the Viper Thrust Management System that's provided their own security in these neighborhoods. And, 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 and these, and these uh, neighborhoods yeah, have voluntary pay for it. No one's been murdered, no one's been robbed, uh, very perfect. And also he has this whole humanitarian out aid for impoverished areas that can't afford it. I would imagine that's Blackwater yeah. regarding... Right, exactly. Blackwater's not a private security yeah, company. They're paid by taxpayer uh, funding, which means that they're not, you, they're not a customer. They're customers to government. That's not a capitalistic, that's not private agency. That's another government project. Before Blackwater got a contract, they were a private company. They can't exist. The only reason they were able to get that money is through government and grants, right. which comes uh, from you, right. which means you're not a customer. You don't have no direct Still, control. My point is, like, I have yeah. no options. They are armed with handguns. They are not armed with military, military companies. Yeah. Company. Yeah. 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 At least yeah. the contract they have at that agency, they have a real contract, and they can cancel and subscribe. You have no contract with the police agency here. You cannot cancel and subscribe. You cannot get them to go bankrupt. You cannot sue the members of this organization. They have a limited life. They have a limited life. Like no one today was here when America was established. But you also have. <laughs> the natives? A private security um, company, yeah, essentially I mean, saying. If anyone had a, oh, any sort of claim, right. yeah, so that would have been allowed to remain what the competition would have been like the is. people that were already well, here. Find out you know, what the right. local but police yeah, control. The Indians, yeah. And then wherever they don't patrol the enough, Indians our private company just like patrols when uh, we sailed over. Right. So and that, that'd be sort of like how they would generate Indians. their money. Is like, oh, well, yeah. I just, I well, at least, the, the so, at least so I know if, um, like, there's another area, I believe, in Texas that I picked out the the community policing and they installed a private agency in there to do it. And this popped up the cost and the policing down by by third. And then the crime has dropped dramatically from those areas. I mean, they're not throwing anyone into a cage for victimless crimes. Whereas this particular agency does and it's wolf, of course you know when people talk about uh, bigoted and racist cops and stuff like that well I would like to know if this organization the security is like that so that way I am not forced to pay for that you have no recourse in terms of uh, the services here that are bigoted and targeted the business right. and government I would say absolutely not over private companies private company has a corporation doesn't necessarily they have now they are really they could tomorrow be like okay exactly you know this was in our company bylaws we're going to change those we no longer agree to those we no longer have any recourse of like you know we're 
just going to be able to pick you up and do whatever you want. No, I just press a button, cancel, they go bankrupt. No one's, I mean, there's... So no, one no, 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 no. Yeah, well, that's why you have the competing contracts of security. And each one of them is looking for the other one to outdo the other one. Hey, listen, look what they just did. Go with us three months for free. Guarantee. If you have an extra bullet at Arsenal, you get a million bucks. If you have 10 years of reputation behind it. You know, that's just how businesses do. Just like going to a food court. Try our free sample. That's the most you'll ever get with any of these services to provide you defense. And of course, the first person to provide you defense is the individual. The individual the yourself but you will have a contract with, with the, the real problem. business of an organization Once you don't that, have a contract if someone else was the police station hey, provided by the government your house too. they're not constitutionally uh, they don't have to protect you the Supreme Court has already ruled that right. that they don't have an obligation just, to protect you unless they're detained and they're in the custody put my so they can see you being harmed right. they don't have to so I can still just the house anyway they're not obligated to why would there be no one to enforce why would you you're no longer their responsibility but that's not saying that there are no security why would there be no society why would there be no like Joint but as an individual, like if I were the police and, and I had him in custody, there no private versus security? not having you in custody, you're free to walk away from me at any time. Is there no private because he no longer yeah. has freedom yeah. over yeah. his own yeah. agency. Right. 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 I have but to take credit for that. That's, that's not. That's not what they're talking about. about. They're talking about if I see uh, some incident occurring over there, someone's so getting hurt and injured right or about to be maimed or seriously, I guess to the point of being murdered. This is this is why the case was brought up. The police officer didn't do anything. You don't have to do anything. I don't feel secure that. I'm paying for a service that they don't have to do anything. I wouldn't want a contract with the agency that has an obligation to me because I'm paying you a service. Details specifically in this case. Because it wasn't as clear cut and dry situation. Yeah, write me your email. I'll send you all, send you all this information. There's a pretty good chance that this, I won't add you to the right? newsletter. I'll just send you the, uh, the court case. Unfortunately, I don't think there is like any In that particular case, the issue yeah, was that they were both, they were both right. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they were both yeah, about to go I mean, close. Uh, the, and the, the cops is, couldn't could decide. People, be people can always be violent. Even now, people Well, it's already been ruled and that it absolves them of any I'm not, duty I'm not to saying protect wouldn't you. Be violent. That's the, I'm that's saying the law I now. That's, that's how it is. Well. I would want I, I, to cancel I immediately, a unsubscribe, go to another service company. I have no freedom to do so. You can't compete against that. You're forced to pay for that service. You're still forced to pay for that immoral. whether you want or so not and that the is government immoral. is inherently immoral when they do it and you say well without them you still have to pay for it if you're like, in another sure. country and they would be inherently immoral what do you mean too. i advocate well, for leave the country you don't have to do that you're not part of the country so then the question well you still have to ask no permission to leave it. the country i mean you, you still have to pay 50 dollars to get a passport do you still have to wait a wait long waiting here for them they can still deny you you still have to ask strangers for permission to leave so yeah you're not free to leave you have to ask your political rulers if it's okay your masters it's okay as me as a tax or a prisoner to leave this country, this tax form region. Right. I wouldn't say that's free. Kind of I mean, if you have to ask permission from anybody to, to be free, no you're being conditioned to be an obedient kind of slave. I mean, I don't get the people I'm police when I wake up. Police force, this I don't, would you say total uh, freedom is ideal? My friend, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. As long as I respect the respect property rights and voluntary yeah. interaction. Yeah. Absolutely. What if I don't? Uh, well, then we know who, what do you mean? You don't respect that's fine. What if I don't respect your personal values, your personal But you don't have to. As long as you're not violently forcing your beliefs onto other people, I mean, I, anything goes. You don't have to respect or understand property rights at all. As long as you're not I, I, stealing, I, I, uh, as long as you're not murdering, raping, assaulting, do whatever you want. I mean, and I, I you still sort of respect by not like, dealing with them. Or unless, we are I guess, a unless you're like oh, just so arrogant uh, or so inclined as to ignore them completely, then that might not be considered as respect. Well, I want to say, because I'll acknowledge, you could say acknowledge, that's a better word. But, um, not sure. Yeah, as long as you're not using sure. violence to solve your problems, I mean, anything goes, pretty, man. It's pretty nasty. Yeah, I mean, look, look at the crime rate in Richmond. I actually yeah, read that. Yeah. Have you? I have not. I've read these. Personally, no. Seven people. Would you like some pamphlets? Here, 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 here. Yeah, yeah, Well, one of them was murdered. One of them was murdered. And they compliment one another. But I'm from the city. Well, I got more in the box, but I'm about to wrap up after this. Probably. Um, yeah, my friend K. I guess my final point would just be that. I mean, when you let people have it, you can't protect everyone. There are some people who really do that. I mean, generally, most of us are really peaceful. I think once you limit their resources, they're readily. And it doesn't even have to be. You and him and him and him. We have no problem with each other. I don't want to steal.
Well, so that's why you want respect for property rights, because resources are limited, they're scarce, they're rivalrous resources. For property rights, it's why it's what resolves those complex of disputes, right? We keep referring to homesteaders, who homesteaded that or that, uh, occupy that resource for right? It's through the ownership claim or transfer of titles to voluntary needs. The government violates all that to begin with. They don't respect your private property. There's a guy in uh, D.C. a few months ago who didn't pay $142 in his um, property taxes for his house. Mortgage paid in full, government put a lead in the South DC government, foreclosed and threw him out on the street. Still a kid, and then I went on. Right, and that's that's how government takes care of the poor, it takes care of respect to property rights. They don't. For a while, yeah, I came down and found it. But absolute freedom is really no better than just complete anarchy. This is anarchy. Look at what we put all the violence in. And then I lived in how much more it goes in the north side. Nobody has anything hovering over their heads. No, I'm not saying that. Right. So I've, um, but I mean, you already have. Told me in the first, the first three questions that you don't use violence to solve your problems, right? So you you don't uh, advocate for, I guess, in that terms, you have this more integrity against initiation of force. I mean, you, you're now with no. like one, two, three, four, five people here already who are against initiation of force. So I guess what you would need is to see a lot more people agree with that to see if it would be possible. In the most basic sense of the word, yes. Okay. Um, so I, I do a lot of recordings of this, of these videos. So I, I do start off with the questions. I have over like nearly 150 recorded discussions of. And individuals can enrich uh, that do agree against yeah, initiation of force, that it's immoral to to, to, uh, 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 to steal, to murder, to rape, to assault. And, and that, these conversations start to grow. I mean, Richmond has a population of 208,000 people. Remember, we're not all trying to change the world or change the country. I mean, you're going to start change anyway, it's going to be here in your own home, right? In their own community, in their own interpersonal relationships. Um, so, I mean, eventually that number kind of keeps growing and growing. I guess all you need is a good 10% of the population for a lot of these ideas to start permeating within the culture here. It becomes a cultural norm. Like, the values again that we push forward. Uh, just like in Detroit, 47 percent of all homeowners uh, two years ago stopped paying the property tax. Before that, just stop. All in Detroit, the government. Oh yeah, you read everything. You read all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's all we got to do. Detroit's a third world country. Well, that used to be government and democracy. And eventually, Sacramento's next. Billion dollars in debt and unfunded liabilities. Sacramento. Yeah, Sacramento, Philadelphia is next. This is because these are unfunded liabilities. You guys have 60 billion dollars in debt. The currency in your pocket today that's also been monopolized. So it's not really all. Seven percent of the value. Here, yeah, first of all, the worst. Every dollar you hide well, 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 underneath your bed mat well, depreciates. Well, 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 that's what happens. So you have a monopoly. The cost goes up. Quality depreciates because, because of like what they're doing. I don't know. The free market is the only thing that's to solve that. To lower the cost or improve quality. Oh, well. Voluntary consensual interaction. Well, it has been. I I will eagerly be listening and absolutely. Thank you so much for stopping by. Pay your taxes. Stop advocating for theft. Here's my car. Oh, it's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. Yeah, you too. Haven't seen you in a while. What's your name? Hey. Vlad? Good to see you. Tie. Tie. <laughs>